Hey guys, PNN here. In our last video, we talked about the factions involved in the Survive.io war. Now, let's talk about all the characters in it, starting from the Parma workers. First off, Dr. Chandler Tawa. He worked at the Hydra Bunker. To be more precise, he was the assistant researcher. The Hydra Bunker is the bunker with three entrances and the hatchet case, most prominently known for dropping the vector more often than not. He did the voiceover for the swine and crossing bunkers that were available on their Survive.io YouTube channel. He is featured in many recordings. He was present at the I event. During the Halloween event, the vending machine skin was named Dr. Towel Machine, hinting a possible connection to Okamai. Or he could have really loved those sodas, but the fact that his last name was replaced could also mean he uses alternate names. During the Christmas mode, when the airdrops were reskinned, you could obtain a skin called Tallow's Little Helper that had the colors of an elf. This indicates that he is related to the airdrops, or more precisely, Meteor, and might have many assistants or people under his authority. The next character is also known as Dr. S. We don't know a whole lot about him. The only confirmed thing we know right now is that he is the lead researcher in the Harpsichord Bunker, which we also don't know much about. This man is a real secret. Hopefully, we'll discover new facts soon. Dr. Richards is also a scientist. We don't know what he worked on, but he was present during the incident at the Eye, where the Eye most probably possessed him. He nearly shot himself or Dr. Tallow, but was apprehended. He committed suicide in the egg bunker during the Soviet incursion using cyanide. Dr. Jackson is another scientist slash researcher working for Parma. Unfortunately, we don't know where he was stationed or what he was working on. On the 15th of April, he and five other scientists were trapped in the egg bunker during the Soviet incursion. Dr. Jackson attempted to reach Bunker 17, also known as the Fowl, to get food supplies. The Fowl Bunker is speculated by the community to be a food storage bunker, getting the name Fowl for the early versions in which the winning screen was a winner winner chicken dinner seeming to imply that the survivors got dinner as a reward for passing the test. After 50 minutes, contact with Dr. Jackson was lost. Later, Chandler Towell states that Jackson was found bleeding in the snow. It is unconfirmed if Jackson survived, but he was surely badly wounded. Dr. Nick was a scientist, referencing Nick Clark, one of the former developers of the game, present during the egg incident on the 26th of April, 1993. The rest of, of his history is unknown, yet to come. Dr. Justin, also referencing Justin Kim, the other former developer, is in a similar situation as Dr. Nick. Occupation unknown, also present in the infamous egg incident. Dr. Spud Solonam is the chief scientist of the Parma FSTMS division, which stands for Food, Science, Terraformation, and Molecular Synthesis but we'll talk about FSTMS in a future video. He is the person responsible for the weaponization of the potatoes, namely the invention of the potato cannon and spud gun, as well as the potato abominations. Who would have guessed the spud guy created potato-related guns? Now those are all of the Parma workers we know of. The lore isn't only Parma. Let's take a look at the other important characters. Mikhail Nivolsky was a wealthy arms dealer, presumably the writer of the Nowalski Reports, an 8 times P artifact during the 2019 Halloween event. He was also the owner of the mansion and Crimson Ring Club, as well as the Nowalski Group, the former financial funder of Parma. The mansion is a large building which is known for its chance to spawn the Deagle case, and rarely the Akimba Deagle case. Note that the deagle and its rounds are gold-plated, which is not normal. The Crimson Ring Club is the two-story building that usually houses the Groza S, but can also house the M79, OTS-38, PKP Pikachen, and the M134. He funded the Parma Initiative. In 1993, during the Soviet incursion, there was a battle involving Parma test subjects, early survivors and the Soviet troops by the mansion, in a log that is found in the alternate barn containing the P-30L sledgehammer and dual clocks. Dmitri, who is Mikhail's son, states that his father paid the ultimate price, which is presumably his life, which is further backed up by him later proclaiming, when one Nowalski still draws breath on the island. In another log, Mikhail 
warned the Soviets that the island isn't safe, presumably due to its supernatural properties and strange cultists, the eye. However, they seemingly didn't heed his warning, meddling with some sort of thing or powers, and killing Navalsky as a result. The Soviets blamed him for the unknown incident. Dmitry Navalsky, as mentioned before, is Mikhail's son. We can hear his voice in the alternate barn. And he has a strangely American accent, unlike his father, who had a thick Russian accent. The weapons hidden in the chest are thought to have been used by him to attack the Soviets, as well as the Groza. We could also hear him in the club's recording. He wanted revenge for his father's death. He got it after a fierce battle, presumably killing the Red Commander in the pool. Kuga is the head of the KHI, which stands for Kuga Heavy Industries. It is important to note that he is not the same Kuga that was on the Rousseau, the ship in the Amarigan video. We can hear Kuga speak in log 6 and 10. Kuga is really interested in whatever is in the chrysanthemum bunker, and could be the possible reason why his company partnered with Parma. We don't know too much about the following characters, so the ne next, next section will be a bit quick. Shimizu is Kuga's close friend and right-hand man. He shares the name of one of Riso's surviving crew. He is more cautious in tampering with the power of the wheel's hold and claimed that the EMFs were exceedingly safe exposure levels during Wong 10. They are reluctantly released it out on Kiga's orders. Mamiya Rinzo was the captain of the Riso and is the narrator during the Aman Haku video. He has presumably wrote Rinzo's log, an 8xP artifact during the 2019 Halloween mode. Kuga, the old one, was most likely one of the lookouts for the Amin Haku's ship, who presumably wrote memoirs of Kugar Cairo, another 8xP artifact, as the memoir has waves on its cover. Shimizu was one, also one of the lookouts for the ship. He lost his right eye during some sort of conflict that happened on the ship. We think this is a connection to the eye or the red zone as the events took place in the Crimson Gale, but there is a chance it's completely unrelated. Kawaguchi was the youngest on the ship. He was a cook. He is now terrified of the sea due to the traumatic experiences on the ship. What could have happened to the ship? According to an old dev quote, unknown red mist caused the sailors to turn on each other and kill their friends. You have probably heard of or played as the blue commander in 50 times 50. He led Parma to fight the Russians during the Soviet incursion. His trusty AN-94, this AN-94 being the ultra rare 7.62 variant standard is 5.45 millimeter with 30 round mags helped him in battle as well as a flare gun to arm his fellow troops and he used or borrowed Dr. Chandler's Talos Kukri, presumably killed him during the incursion as there is no mention of him after the incursion, much unlike the Red Commander. The Red Commander leads the Soviets in their fight against Parma. In battle, he uses the only shotgun to use slugs in game, the Super 90, as well as a flare gun like the Blue Commander. He also uses the Machete Taiga that is placed in the Crimson Club's upper vault and is given upon promotion to Red Commander in 50 times 50 The Red Commander is probably related to the defective regiment of the Spinzas, who were hell-bent on rebuilding the USSR due to the machete being the Spetsas survival-slash-combat machete, USVR Taiga to be exact. He was most probably killed by Dmitri, and it is very probable that he killed Dmitri's father, Bikal. Note that the commanders you play as in 50 times 50 are not the commanders that were in the original incursion. They were real humans, not survivors, as well as all the soldiers. Heinrich Henry Friedrich Emil Lenz is a German physicist that studied electromagnetism. This indicates that the red zone is actually electromagnetic waves. You might remember that his surname from school. Indeed, a person called Wells did exist. He is responsible for Lenz's law about electromagnetic fields. Thank you for watching this way longer than a usual video. See you all next time. Peace out.